Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are in the Outer Banks of North Carolina at Oregon Inlet Campground. It is a, it's not a national park. I think we're on a national seashore. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about Wi-Fi and how we get our Wi-Fi signal while we're camping. And we're gonna go through some of the different things that we've tried in the past, what we're currently doing, and I'm gonna lead into where we're gonna go in the future. And this will be part one. Part two will show our future system that we will be getting installed. So let's roll that um, main introduction footage and we'll be back on the other side and we'll talk some more. So I'm here with Eric from Technical RV and... So uh, we do, and, and staying connected on the road is such a hot topic with RVers, especially uh, the number of RVers that are out there and people trying to work from the road, like yourself, yep. you know, you're editing videos, you need to stay connected. I run this business from the road, so I needed to figure this out. Exactly. And so, uh, you know, you, you, and again, we simplify things. There's two ways to stay connected on the road. One is cellular, that's connecting to the local cellular tower, yeah. and one is Wi-Fi, and that's connecting to a local uh, access point through, say, an RV park. Correct. So let's just say those. that's it. Now really what it comes down to is, is uh, the person that I'm talking to. A lot of people that we talk to are like, look, I don't want to use any of my cellular data. Mm -hmm. Like, I really want to preserve that, and so I really want to stick with Wi-Fi and connecting to somebody else's access point. And then I have people like probably yourself and me that are like, look, I'll pay for the data as yeah. long as I got signal. So. Yep. so you have a lot of options available to you to get access to good Wi-Fi while you're traveling. And one of them is the campground Wi-Fi. It's most campgrounds, um, most private campgrounds, I should say, offer some type of Wi-Fi. And it's free. It's usually included in the cost of your staying there. It's the, the advantages to that is, you know, it, there's usually no charge or minimal charge. Um, you don't need any additional equipment. You can log in right on your device. And a lot of times it's probably good for checking emails. So if you want to stream movies and such, it's probably not strong enough for that unless they offer something stronger. Um, the downside is the signals can be weak because of where you are in the campground. If you happen to be right next to the antenna, you're going to get a good signal. If you're a distance from that, you may not be able to get a good signal on that. And it's a lot of times speed limited. So you can't stream movies or do things like that. So you can be limited to what you want to do. One option that we've tried in the past um, is an upgrade to that is a Wi-Fi Ranger. And so a Wi-Fi Ranger is a dedicated external antenna system for your Wi-Fi. It's a router and it has an external antenna that you mount on the roof of your um, trailer. I'll show some pictures of it right up here of what our system looked like. And with a Wi-Fi Ranger, you can pull in that weaker signal. So if you are in a campground and you're not near the antenna, you can pull that signal in. Um, we've actually found that that worked well for like you know, overnighting at a Walmart. We've been able to pull the Walmart signal into our trailer and use their Wi-Fi while we're traveling. You also get the advantage of having a router in your system. So you get some security advantages to that as opposed to directly connecting into their Wi-Fi. You essentially get a firewall um, between you and the campground's Wi-Fi they do cost more. Um, Wi-Fi Rangers typically cost about $300 and up depending on what level of antenna you get. And some of the newer ones do have cellular capability. The router in a Wi-Fi Ranger can tend to, has a tendency to slow the signal down. Uh, my experience was we, when we had our Wi-Fi Ranger um, and we also picked up a cellular hotspot that going through the Wi-Fi Ranger um, router with the cellular hotspot limited the speed of the Wi-Fi to the point where real, a lot of times it wasn't usable. So we ended up not using the Wi-Fi Ranger much at all. The next step up, if you want to get away from using the, the campground Wi-Fi, would be to use your cell phone. And you know, a lot of your cell phones like this will have hotspot capability that you can tap in and then connect your device to it and you're going through your cellular network. And, but you're also going through your 
phone's data plan and so depending on what you have for data you may find that limiting or you may have to purchase additional data which can be costly um, we've done that in the past and we've quickly found that just in a few days you can max out your data plan depending on what you have um, so again this might be good for checking emails but again I wouldn't you know unless you've got a really good data plan I wouldn't recommend streaming any uh, movies or anything on that want to move up from using your cell phone for a hotspot the next thing to get would be a dedicated hotspot like this this happens to be an AT&T hotspot but all the um, different plans offer them you can get you can do pay by service where you pay for just what you use or you can get into a regular plan a monthly plan and have it renewable um, the plans are vary on how much data you can have and that's probably one of the downsides to one of these is some of them are limited to data or the data plans can be very expensive um, an unlimited plan from AT&T could be hundreds of dollars a month or you might be able to find something like we found an unlimited plan through a third party called NetBuddy that gives us AT&T service for about $65 a month. To get better reception you can get a Wemo type antenna like this that can be mounted on the windows of your RV to give you increased reception. Um, this one what we typically do is we take this and put it in the window closest to the cell tower and wherever we happen to be and we found that this is fairly effective some of the downsides to a system like this you can still be limited to signal strength um, we've had situations where we just couldn't get a good signal with this no matter what we did and it may be just a typical typical issue with you know this being AT&T and her and Verizon has a better signal strength there it could be a situation where you're just too far away and this antennas just aren't strong enough in this or with that small external antenna to get a better signal some plans do limit your speed and the amount of data that you have so you have to be careful about that when you're selecting your plan like I said we did pick a plan that was unlimited and it has worked fairly well for us the other solution here that you might want to look at with one of these devices if you're having trouble pulling a signal is getting a cell booster and I had the opportunity recently to talk with uh, Eric Johnson from Techno RV on cell boosters and we went into detail on what they do for this and it's really like the next step this will get you 75 percent of the time a good Wi-Fi signal a cell booster may take that up to 85 or 90 percent of the time you're gonna get a good cell signal and so let's play the video from Eric so one of the questions that I've been asked um, by people that follow me and friends yep. is you know how do we stay connected on when we're traveling on the road and that's you know again there's multiple ways of doing that and I have my way of doing it and I'm not saying my way is the best okay. right? it's basically just a little hot spot okay yeah. um, and it works 75% of the time right. and then there's that other 25% of the time I just don't get a strong enough signal to get it and it could use something better yes. and I think you guys have uh, some solutions to that we use a jetpack just like you use Verizon and AT&T we keep a Verizon and AT&T uh, plan mm -hmm. those are the top two uh, cell carriers they have the biggest footprint map then it's just a matter of to your point 75 percent of the time you're okay well what about that other 25 percent of the time that's what I need to focus on to resolve that problem and we use we boost cellular boosters and what a cellular booster does is you'll have an outside antenna right. that grabs the weak signal from the local cell tower. It brings it in, runs it through a true amplifier, boosts that signal within that amplifier, and then out of the other side of that amplifier is a small inside antenna. That inside antenna rebroadcasts a boosted signal inside of your RV. It creates a boosted zone within your RV and as long as your device whether it's your hotspot or your cell phone or whatever is within that boosted zone it's going to boost it right. so you, you'll see increases in your signal strength so you may go from I couldn't open emails to now I can't open emails you may go from I could open emails but couldn't do video but now I can do all of it there's a whole range of things on how much improvement it'll get because it depends on that originating strength right if there's something to boost it will boost I will tell you that we, we've, we've uh, uh, been in our RV to, to uh, 49 states. 
all the lower 48 when we went to Alaska. Yep. And, uh, and, and, and there's been, now we don't get off grid a lot, because I know a lot of people boondock way out in the desert or something. We don't do a whole lot of that. Uh, but there's been very few times in my travels with that setup right there, as simple as it is, uh, that we have not had signal. Right. So generally, with that, we're okay. If we don't have signal and we happen to be in an area that has Wi-Fi, then we can pull out a Wi-Fi booster. It works kind of the same way as a cellular booster. Antenna uh, uh, brings in a signal and uh, creates its own hotspot with a repeater right. inside your RV. All this stuff is great for additional security because these repeaters, you can add your own password, they're WPA encrypted. And so it really does uh, uh, help with that as well. Because yeah. a lot of people are asking about that, about how do I increase the security um, on that. But uh, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it, they're, they're great solutions, they're simple. And uh, the WeBoost is the industry standard. We do have them at technorv.com. You can, and we do have information guides. May have been some of the stuff you saw. We have information guides on Wi-Fi boosting and yep. cellular boosting. And anybody can go to our site, go to Learn Here, download an information guide. And I, we've really laid it out to where it's super simple and it'll be easy for an RVer to understand how to do this. I think that when I've looked at your, uh, your solutions, and one thing I really did like, and you did touch on that, was the repeater. Mm -hmm. And that's something that um, I do with my, my, my uh, hotspot, is I did get a little router and I do a repeater in there, yeah. because a lot of things won't connect to the hotspot, yeah. and you need to have that. And you know we have a, a, a camera inside the RV so we can check on our dogs during the day. Mm -hmm. We have a temperature sensor and such to keep track of those yeah. things. You know, and you want to be able, you also want to be able to connect those things to one device, and so that they're always easily connected. And then you have to, if your repeater can connect to your your hotspot or to the campground Wi-Fi or whatever, mm -hmm. and it gives you that option. Yeah, and you can also get uh, you know usually those will have additional uh, Ethernet ports. Yeah, um, uh, you know direct connecting is is uh, is always better. Yeah, uh, if if you can direct connect to something, uh, it's just like even even somebody in a home, you know, they've got their router and maybe their computer's sitting next to their router and they direct connect with an Ethernet cable. That's going to be better than if you're three rooms over wirelessly connected to that router. Right. So same thing yeah. in the RV world. If you can get uh, direct connect, and I assume that's what you do with that a little uh, additional piece of equipment there that you can direct connect things to that, and uh, and so that's a that's another good tip. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Well, Eric, thank you very much. I do appreciate your time, and, yeah. and I'm glad we got the opportunity to connect here. Well, I, I, uh, uh, I uh, subscribed to your channel. Thank you. Uh, uh, here a few days ago, and I've been checking all your stuff out, so keep up the good work, and look forward to seeing where you are headed next. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. All right. Bye now. This is great scenery behind us, isn't it? Um, you don't get often to get a chance to shoot videos in places like this, so you really want to take a chance, take the opportunity to enjoy it. Uh, so some of the other options that are available are more of a RV hotspot. And this is something new to the market that's kind of just come out in the last year or so. And there's a couple different systems out there that we've looked at and we are considering this to be our next step for our Wi-Fi because they've offered some really decent advantages. One of the systems out there that's available is called Togo Roadlink. And that's a new system that mounts to the roof of your RV and everything is in this system. It includes an external antenna, a um, cellular modem, a router. Um, it's all complete and you mount it on your system, hook up a power source to it and you're ready to go. Another advantage to the system is they do offer cellular plans through AT&T that are very reasonable. We had the opportunity recently at the Hershey RV show to talk to one of the representatives from Togo and I will roll that video here and they'll share a little bit more about the system. Tell me about the sure. Togo. Mm -hmm. it, Togo's a, uh, a brand name. Okay. What they did is they did their negotiating for data they did it with AT&T so you buy the piece of equipment mm -hmm. uh, you go online to Togo and buy your uh, annual package it's three six three hundred sixty dollars for annual package unlimited use unlimited data I mean okay and up to 20 devices that's good yeah so this is 350 
uh, with included tax included. So you buy that, you pay your 365. Now you're unlimited for the whole year. Decent. Um, what's on the inside? I mean, that's obviously on the roof. There's a cable going in. There's a yeah, there's box. one cable going yeah. through the roof down okay. the cable to a 12 volt switch. Oh, okay. So you can turn that on if you have your four, if you're hooked up to your 4G side of it. You flip that switch on, you wouldn't even have to shut it off. Yeah. You just let it run. You know, and yeah. with your unlimited data, you don't have to worry about going over. Or... Right. Right. So everything's in in the the box yep. there yep. on the roof, mm -hmm. and it just transmits down through the roof of the vehicle. Yeah. Okay. And it also does Wi-Fi extending. Yeah. So if you have a, a Wi-Fi available, you can utilize that free Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know why you would with unlimited 4G. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but hey, you might get in a position mm -hmm. where. Uh, you're using uh, AT and T might just not have the greatest service, right? And there, but there's a good free Wi-Fi available. Yeah, I'll, I'll switch it over to the Wi-Fi. Yep. Well, very interesting. Thank you very much. You bet. Thanks. So, for me, I'm not sure that the Togo system is the best for an Airstream, and the reason I say that is the whole system is mounted on the roof of the Airstream or roof roof of the RV, and that signal has to transfer inside. And I'm concerned that the aluminum skin of the Airstream may limit that signal coming in. And so I'm not sure that's the direction we're going to go. We have been looking very closely to a new system that Airstream has put out called Airstream Connect. Airstream Connect has to be installed by an Airstream dealer. With that, you get a lower monthly rate um, for service and it is a two-part system with an external antenna and an internal um, modem. So it helps eliminate some of that issue that you might have with the Togo system having everything externally on the roof. You've got some of this internally inside. And so that's where we're thinking of going for our Airstream and we are going to get that installed and that will be a future video. We'll go through and show you what is involved with the Airstream Connect and getting it installed and the pros and cons of that system um, from that point. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so that you can be part of the adventure. If you want to receive notifications of when we post new videos, which we do on a weekly basis, hit the bell and we'll send you a notification as we post new videos each week. Thank you for watching and we'll see you down the road. Bye.